Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it's another day, another Velma video, of course. Yeah, I just, everybody, like everybody is turning on this. Yeah. The Atlantic is now turning on this. Uh, according to Forbes, Velma is now officially the worst show on TV, by the way. But yeah, The Atlantic is turning on Velma. And The Atlantic, that was the audience we thought Velma was for. And uh, it seems like the media is trying to scrape Velma off the bottom of their shoes. Mm -hmm. And this is a very scathing article talking about how not to reboot something. But the funny thing is, is a lot of points that they bring up in this, you could apply to other ill-conceived reboots that the media loved. Mm -hmm. But uh, Velma crossed the line. That's the video. Velma crossed the line according to the media. So before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture, news views, and rants. Guys, over 280, almost 289,000. Uh, please hit the subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications. YouTube tends to unsubscribe people if you don't interact in a while. So if you're watching our videos just out of habit and they get recommended to you, that doesn't mean that you're actually subscribed. Mm -hmm. So just to, just to point that out. All right, so Geeky sent this over, the line that Velma crossed, that's the archived version, because apparently they changed the headline to be nicer. Yeah, like Velma it's, a, it's, is just, mean. it's just mean. That's what I keep saying, is that Velma's just mean. That's did, what I'm mad about. Is she's mean. Did Mindy Kaling uh, uh, write them and say you can't you can't say that Velma crossed the line? Doubt it. But she crossed the line. So they changed it from Velma. The line that Velma crossed. Yeah, the line that Velma crossed to she's just mean. So yeah, this is they're talking about how it disrespects the source material. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I was very entertained by that. So they're talking about the new adult oriented with characters that are underage. I want to repeat that. This is an adult-oriented show, but it's a focused on teenagers, and Velma's running around with a, a towel and soap, making out with, or I'm sorry, Daphne's running around with a towel on in, in the shower, and then they have them kissing and all this other crap with her, like Daphne's supposed to be naked and all that, for a show about underage characters. Yes, and of course, if it were any other show, if it were a certain show involving a certain blonde-haired, sword-swinging heroine and a cat girl, Man, they'd be all about it, uh -huh. but uh, they don't like Velma because they think it's all right or something. <laughs> Nobody wants to be associated with this. They just so, well, I'm looking at this like I'm looking at this. They're talking about the characters. He said uh, da Daphne sells drugs. Fred yes. gets shot in both legs. Shaggy, who's normal now, tries to sell a kidney on the black market. <laughs> Scenes of gratuitous violence pad almost every episode. Limbs get severed. Corpses wad of trash bins. Riots break out in a prison. Wow, jinkies. You know, what's funny is this thing was announced what, a year or two ago. And when they were cutting all the, the Cartoon Network content and all the HBO Max, uh, you know, um, young adult content, I thought for sure that they would kill this show. I Because because they were they canceled Batgirl because they claimed it would be brand damaging. How many parents? I'm telling you right how now. How bad was Bad Girl? How bad was Bad Girl? This thing, sh Mindy Kaling has to have like the most ironclad contract or something because if I were Zaslav and I were looking at this and I wanted to focus on my core brands and I canceled Scoob 2 and I canceled the Scooby Doo. They were done. They were done basically. And I canceled the Scooby Christmas special and they were on brand for the target audience, which is kids and family. And and I went ahead with an R-rated Scooby. Well, they're still gonna run the Flash film. Yeah, I would. I'd be like, what the hell are you thinking? So it has. There has to have been something in her contract that was like, you have to, you know, go forward with this show. Batgirl was almost done. Uh, Scoop Two was almost done. So it's not a matter of it being almost done or done. They could have still said, yeah, we're not gonna run this because it's awful. I still think since Warner Brothers can't be the best, they want to be the worst. So um, you know, because they're both gonna get you a lot of attention. So they said, like, the months leading up to the debut, the creative team seemed to anticipate the backlash. Of course they were going to. Yes. Um, the creator, Charlie Grandy, argued that the writer's alterations, including excising Scooby from the gang, reimagining Velma as a misanthropic South Asian teenager, and incorporating grotesque gags, felt authentic to the spirit of the original series. What? We wanted to be respectful, he explained. We didn't want to just kind of take these beloved characters and put them in outrageous or gross situations and say, isn't it crazy you did that to Velma? It, it's, like a, the fuck? it's like a Family Guy parody of Velma, except worse, of, of Scooby-Doo. It's like Family right, Guy. Family Guy's funny. Yeah, the fam, man. If, fam, if Family Guy did Scooby-Doo bad, like they did the Star Wars Family Guy, if they did Scooby-Doo, but they did it Oh, really badly. Would, they, even it, that wouldn't have been 
Velma. Left. I would actually take I would actually take Meg Meg Griffin over over Velma. I just yeah. I just I don't know. They're saying about well this month they said many they started this month many complaints are as is frequently the case with projects that change the ethnicity of originally white characters. That was the shield. So here's how it works, guys. It was the diversity shield. The show is truly awful. If the characters had been their original ethnicity, which was all white, um, everybody would have thought this is a terrible idea. But but media kind of gave it a pass at first. Like, well, it just looks like the bigots are angry because the film is brown. And then they kind of made the fun of it. The film has been Asian before. She's been Asian before. But then it turns out the show is so God awful bad that they can't even apologize for it. They're, they're accusing. They can't even hide behind the racism. Part. They can't even hide it. So I mean, I, I, I'm thinking on some level, this might actually be a game changer. Maybe it is. Maybe it is the right wing psyop after all. This is like okay. This is what happens when you let really bad ideas run amok and then you use diversity as a shield. You get Velma. You know, you right. get Velma. And even the, even the the people that you know love diversity and inclusion in any way, shape, or form hate this. Yes. They're talking about the knee-jerk racist reaction to seeing well-known figures on in a new context. No, it was just a really bad idea. It's a Scooby-Doo show without Scooby. You, you kind of, even with the race bending, you stereotyped the characters. Because when you change their races, you you added stereo, the stereotypes along with it. Yeah. It, and I mean, that's not cool. They said the real problem with Velma isn't that the updates make euphoria. It's that the updates make euphoria look like child's play. It's that its edginess comes at the expense of its own characters. Oh, my God. And punishes the audience for being invested. Like a certain Mystery Inc. member rummaging around the dark for her glasses. The series is unfocused, confused, and desperately lost. Who is this for? Who is the, Mindy Kaling, basically, and the guy, the uh, Grandy, Char Charlie Grandy. They said um, about the, the meta jokes about television. They did a lot of this stuff. They said it's very dated. Um, they said it's, it's storytelling beats are meant to parody dark teen dramas like Riverdale, but it grows old quickly. They kind Here's the thing. They kind of did that with Mystery Inc. Mystery Inc. was a darker take. But it was on, good. But it was good. Mystery Inc. is, uh, you know, uh, some people don't like it. That's fine. Um, I actually thought Mystery Inc. was very good, and I thought it handled the characters were still themselves. I mean, regardless of what you think of it, regardless of what you think of the tone, I mean, other than Fred being dumber than he usually is, for the most part, the characters were still themselves. And these are this is just a straight up like off brand R rated Scooby Doo, and they should have just called it something else. I'd say if it if it was Scooby Doo, if you bought it from Wish, but that's an insult to Wish. <laughs> Um, wish it would disappear. Yeah, characters constantly pause the action to call out and summarize narrative tropes rather than letting the story unfold. And they give an example. Velma explains her relationship with her father in terms of television history before a scene plays out. Um, and Sounds about, like family yeah, guy. It's like, and then it goes on about that. They said that there's a lot of monologue is unstable and completely unnecessary. They said that they're static, they're static joke delivery machines, not characters. Like family guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I'm sorry. It's, it is what it is, right? Because they teach each other by pointing out the stereotypes and that and they embody, flattening everyone into the very archetypes they're skewering, which is what we keep saying. Oh, the racists hate it. No, the racists, you're like going about racism, but it's not racism when you're like, why are you Why are you race bending these characters for no good reason? Why are you stereotyping them so much? I mean, it's a joke. And, you know, you only can play the characters that look like you, which is even rid more ridiculous. So um, Daphne is played by an Asian woman, so she obviously has to be Asian. I still like, you know, Fred has a tiny dick, so I'm assuming the voice actor does too. Um, Do we have to check? Please, please tell us no, we, don't we don't have, have to check. No, we don't have to check. Uh, they're talking about like how, you know, okay, they, this is interesting. They said when the characters do grow, the evolution is inconsistent or simply played for last. Like but, Family Guy. Velma in one episode realizes she has no clue how to be a woman in the way that ju doesn't judge other women. But by the next episode, she's pettily tearing down female cl classmate again. <laughs> so it's like, it isn't really, this is where it gets me. It isn't really reimagining Velma or Daphne or Fred or Norval at all. Um, though endless references and half-hearted attempts at self-aware humor, the show seems most, most concerned with picking apart the original franchise, the ludicrousness of the mysteries and the absurdity of the gang's efforts, the tropes each character perpetuated. Yet in doing so, <laughs> the series fails to make fresh, fresh observations about Scooby-Doo or the teen dra dra drama genre. It's outdated. Oh, okay. I know. I love. It just offers a relentless barrage of outdated pop culture commentary, like Family Guy. Oh, okay. Okay, I had but, to get that in. But there. go to the bottom. So they're talking about these other shows, and they're saying about you know uh, mature updates of cartoons can work. 
HBO Max itself houses one of the best Harley Quinn, because she's a lesbian in that one, right? Like Velma, the show is violent, packed with meta jokes, blah, 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 blah. But unlike Velma, the series has a clear reverence for the original franchise. It treats Harley with respect, prioritizing her development, even amid rapid fire jokes. Velma, meanwhile, emphasizes its shallow humor, yielding a project that struggles to be playful and misunderstands its protagonist's appeal. No, reboots shouldn't be carbon copies of their source material. What? But neither should they dismiss it or sneer at the viewers who care. Notice how you said who care, because then they're going to argue like She-Ra. Well, the viewers that were tuning in because they like the new version. It shouldn't, it shouldn't oh, insult them. No, 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 no. I remember just a couple of years ago when they announced uh, Stevenson's Shira for people who like Shira that isn't Shira. I remember she were that good. Yeah, the, the, can't Shira that good. Yeah, because the show couldn't Shira that good either. Again, I, you know, it's not the worst thing ever. If it was called something else, I wouldn't have an issue, right? You do you, boo, whatever. Um, the marketing for the show, the PR machine was like. Finally, a Shira that men won't fap to, because that's what she was all about. Right, but it's okay if we have if you know our audience flicks the bean to Shira. That's completely fine. It's not for you. It's, it's for women that like women and not for men. <laughs> An underage, abusive lesbian relationship is totally fine, but at least you're not jerking off to Shira. Right, and then they kept changing <laughs> characters for no damn good reason yes. and changing everything about it. And then, and then if you didn't like it, you were istophobe. Um, but they said reboots shouldn't be carbon copies of the source material, but they shouldn't dismiss. Uh, it shouldn't be the, the, dismiss the viewers who care. Shira was kept around for thirty some years. And immediately your take was, if you don't like the show, it's because you're a horrible person. And yes. we're going to, the PR was literally, if you like the old she or you're a terrible person. Yes. that w And that has been the case for uh, many of these shows over the last couple of years. That is the marketing. In fact, I, I have to wonder if the Shira debacle didn't in part lead to uh, sci-fi girls getting shut down because that was the, the <laughs> PR. I just remember when they they were interviewing the people and they were on they were on YouTube during the yeah. convention and we ran against them reacting their stream, reacting yeah. to them yeah, at, so during, at the stream way we more had people. way more people watching us than they had watching them and it was um, just us watching them making fun of them yes and it was awful like it was very clear that the people working on the show had no respect or love for the original it was basically uh, Stevenson's fan fiction it was obviously supposed to be a different show and they just you know threw a coat of sort of kind of sort of Shira paint on it. But again, and you know, that aside, there's so many other examples of, of shows that the marketing for the last five to 10 years has been to throw shade at the original, to throw shade at the original fans. And I think we're starting to see, maybe that was the point. Maybe this is, maybe this is meta. Maybe this is, you know, uh, some meta commentary on, but I think we're starting to see that like, you can only take it so far before it becomes unrecognizable and vicious and awful. And I just love it. It's mean when it pisses them off. It's mean when it pisses them I off. I like the original, you know, characters. I'm glad that they're not white, all white now because down with patriarchy. But now it's just leading into territory that I don't like. Isn't this what you wanted? Isn't this what you wanted? Um, it doesn't matter what the plot's like, right? It doesn't matter what the characterization's like, right? As long as everybody's race swapped. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. You mean you have to actually have good characters with race swaps? You can't just insert diversity in and that, that's the whole point of the show? That everybody, literally their characterization is, I am I am uh, brown, I am a lesbian. You mean you, that doesn't work? People don't like it? Are you kidding? So this is the problem with uh, you know Marvel Comics and DC Comics now. It's the same kind of thing. Now it's working its way into animation where... It's literally just like, well, the show is meta and we obviously don't like the original and we're going to tear down the original. And but say we're trying to like respect it. it. But we're trying to respect it and we're going to race swap all the characters. You better like it or you're a bigot. They're, they're, not, they're not recognizable other than the fact that they have their name in a costume that looks like the original character's on. That's all in that bath and that's still the same. I, I remember. Yeah, they're basically cosplaying as the original characters. But bad versions. I, evil versions. Remember when the pictures dropped, when the photos dropped of the show, all these media outlets were tripping over themselves to be like, look, bigots hate brown Velma, bigots, bigots hate and, the and brown Velma. And comment was, but she's been, you know, Asian before. Yeah, I mean. She's I, been like, you know, this isn't new. And I was like, okay, well, maybe it's, maybe it'll be a different take on it. Maybe it'll be funny, whatever. And I saw the original trailer, the teaser trailer, I was kind of sort of interested because, you know, they were, it was obviously meta. They were poking fun yeah. at race swapping. And it's like, oh, cut the brown Velma after she gets angry about race swapping. I'm like, okay, that's kind of funny. 
that's kind of funny. But then, yeah, it was just all downhill from there. And this was a terrible idea. Um, Zaslav, again, he canceled nearly complete Scooby projects that were on brand for this. And it has to have been her contract. I, I can't think that there's any other well, reason. Or, like I said, they can't be the best. They're going to be the best at being the worst. Because if you really suck, you're going to get a lot of views, too. That's true. Um, everybody's talking about. We can't Bill. win, then we'll lose, but we'll take. We'll still win. We'll take you with us. We'll take all you chuds with us. So yeah, uh, according to Forbes, Velma is now officially the worst show on TV. The yeah, I know it was down. Then it was back up again. I mean, talking about like the Rotten Tomato score. Yeah, it's I know just, it had bad. dropped down, but then I think it went back up. I didn't check it. The I, last I think of days. it's under. I think it's under. Uh, it's not just that the Metacritic. I think it's under uh, Santa Inc., which is another oh, HBO. Yeah, that bad. That's bad. Yeah, so this was um, Fear the Walking Dead is gonna, is one of the worst shows out there, apparently. But there's a new show already rearing its ugly head to take Fear's place. Unlike Fear, which had three reasonably good seasons before jumping the shark, this one was terrible from the get-go. It's Velma. It's Velma. No Scooby, not a children's cartoon, not a very good mystery show. Uh, not funny in the slightest. Not funny in the slightest. I know that the Metacritic score is really bad. The only thing Velma has managed to do well, which we've said, and this is quite actually the achievement, is unite the entire internet for one brief moment. Conservatives, liberals, Scooby fans, and non-fans alike all agree Velma is a stinging pile of Scooby doo doo, which we've mentioned before this article came out all yeah. the times. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know what they were thinking. Um, and it just goes on and on about how awful it is. It's not even funny like South Park. Um, you know, Mindy Kaling has kind of gone AWOL, though. She yeah, had you don't see anything about her. Well, I, th that whole thing came out with her. And for those of you who didn't watch previous video, um, apparently, like 10 years ago, she was talking to Conan O'Brien and she was joking about how she non-consensually kissed Lee Pace. Right. Uh, ironically enough, who plays Ronan the Accuser in mm -hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy. So she, you know, accusations. But yeah, she kissed Lee Pace. He was not happy about it. He was very uncomfortable. And then she joked with him that no we'll joke to people backstage but well, yeah said that you, you know get fired if you say anything about it or whatever and she's like ha ha isn't that funny i'm like now if it wasn't mindy kaling and it was lee pace doing that to her or some other dude doing some other yeah. dude doing that to her that person would be fired blacklisted it'd be all over the smeared, media it'd be all over the media this person you wouldn't be able to go to conan or whatever and make a joke about it you won't be able to go to conan and make a joke about it which, ironically, uh, speaking of Me Too, um, Time's Up just got disbanded. Yes, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, we're not doing a whole video on it. But, yeah, they got disbanded. I guess what money's left was going to their legal defense fund. <laughs> but that's... What money's left after vacationing. After all their parties and after stuff. All the parties. Uh, not actually helping people, apparently. Um, they're, they're putting it into their legal funds. Yeah, so it's... Uh, the whole thing is... Look, and I said before, the, the pendulum is swinging... Everything is starting to come, across, you know, come apart, and a lot of it is, I think, the you know, media like this, the access media, all these blogs. A lot of them are going to get shut down because there are too many of them. There's not enough ad revenue to go around. They're not getting the perks from the studios anymore. So the whole thing is just like kaboom. And I'm wondering how many of them are finally either finally saying what they've honestly felt the whole time, and they're not doing these fan baiting articles. Or how many of them just uh, don't give a shit and they're trying to they're trying to play the other side now? Like, well, I always hated race swapping hire characters. Me. I always hated the Last Jedi too. I just you know, please hire me. Yeah. Please hire me. <laughs> so you know. Anyway. Uh, so I don't know, guys. There it is. Everybody hates Velma. Velma crossed the line. Velma is another. I, I can't say Velma is part of the culture war because everybody unilaterally hates it. But it might be a hand grenade that kind of ends some of this bullshit. You know, <laughs> almost a hand grenade. Don't. All right, are we ready? We're yeah, we're done. We're done. All we'll right, wrap we'll it up. talk to you later. See ya.